Hello and welcome to the 12th insight in the Baselight Beginner video series. In this insight, we're going to have a look at creating shapes. Um, as you know, in any color grading software, creating shapes is an essential task. Whether you're creating a vignette mat or whether you're uh, targeting a specific area of the image uh, to do specific adjustments. Um, so in this insight, we're going to have a look at creating shapes. We're going to have a look at adding and deleting control points. We're going to have a look at sort of blending more than one shape and subtracting more than one shape in one shape layer. And in the next insight, we'll go in and dig into tracking shapes. So lots to get into. Uh, let's get into it. Okay, so we've got four shots here from the practice project Mother Died, which is available on mixinglight.com. So how do we add a shape to this scene? Starting off with this shot here, let's go ahead and add a new grading layer with a keyboard shortcut P. And our keyboard shortcut for adding a shape is S on the keyboard. As you can see, that creates a brand new shape layer, and this is attached to our layer two. With both of these selected, I'm gonna hit delete, and let's create a shape layer another way. I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard to create a brand new grading layer, and I'm gonna to go to the insert menu, scroll down, and add a shape. Layers have been hidden above the shape, so we're gonna to need to rearrange the shape in the stack uh, to make things work. So to do that, I'm gonna hit Option up arrow to nudge the shape up one layer. But you can see we still have a black screen, so what's going on? If we go to our grading layer, I'll make this a bit bigger, if we have a look at our use mat toggle, you can see we have two options here. When you add a shape using the keyboard shortcut S, it will automatically toggle on this four grade option. So I'm gonna click this here, and you can see that everything springs back to life. So if you ever insert a shape from the menu, or if you're ever having issues with your shape and it's not sort of showing up, definitely as your first port of call, go check that your four grade toggle is selected. Okay, so now we've inserted our shape operator, we can toggle between the two using the keyboard shortcut G. So G swaps me up to my shape, and then G swaps me back down to my grade layer. Hitting G, let's zoom into the image here using command middle mouse button drag to the right. I'll reposition the image display using the middle mouse button click and drag, and let's have a look at our parameters view on the left. I'm gonna hide this sub panel, so we have a bit more room to play with. And let's have a look at the different components of the parameters view when we have our shape layer selected. So the top sub panel is where you create shapes. Uh, you can either draw them freehand or you can select from a variety of other shapes. We've got the feathering sub panel, which is where we're going to start to look at feathering our shapes. Um, tracking, which we'll cover in the next insight. And you can also see that there's some additional options down the bottom, including invert mat. Scrolling up to the top, uh, let's go ahead and draw our first freehand shape in Baselight. So making sure that our new shape mode is on freehand and the new shape toggle is selected, I'm just going to go over to the image display and start drawing these control points onto my image. Using the left mouse button, as I click, you can see it creates new hard control points with no Bezier curves. If I click and drag, you can see that I can create new Bezier curves as I go, which is nice and handy especially for circular objects like a face. And as soon as I join two control points, I will have created my first shape. I'm just gonna zoom out a touch. So right off the bat, you can see that there are two boxes that surround our newly created shape. We've got our shape bounding box, and we've got our Bezier curve bounding box. When we click our Bezier curve bounding box, you can see that our shape springs to life. Um, and we can go ahead and modify our control points here. And our shape bounding box allows us to do uh, resizing and scaling. So if I want to adjust my shape, I can do so using this blue bounding box. If I want to scale up or down but keep the proportions of my shape intact, I can hold down the command key while clicking and dragging, and you can see that this retains the dimensions of the shape. Using the shape control handles, I can rotate my shape. If I rotate the shape using the shape bounding box compared to rotating the shape using the Bezier curve bounding box, you can see that the shape bounding box expands to fit the Bezier curves. So if I'm rotating and doing things like that, I will normally rotate using the blue bounding box just to keep things tidy. So let's zoom in a little bit further and we'll talk about adding, modifying and deleting control points. Uh, firstly, adding control points is nice and easy. If you click anywhere on this yellow dashed line and click out, you can see that we can create new control points here, nice and easy. If we want to delete a control point, with the control point selected, like this one is here, I can hit Command, Delete, and that will delete them. So I'm also going to click this one here and hit Command, Delete, and the control point is gone. 
You can adjust the Bezier curve of each point by dragging on these handles here. If you want to add a Bezier curve to a hard control point like this, you can just hold down the command key and click and drag out to the left and out to the right, and you can add your Bezier curves in after the fact. You can also click and command click multiple keyframes and adjust them at once. So if you're doing sort of any broad shape adjustment, you can do that here. Also, if you prefer, you can lasso multiple control points and adjust them in tandem like this. To deselect the control points, just go ahead and click on one and that'll reset the selection. Okay, fantastic. We'll zoom out a little bit using command middle mouse button drag to the left and just middle mouse button here to rearrange. I'm not a huge fan of this shape that I've created. It's quite wonky and not very symmetrical. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this selected shape here. And using the same shape layer, I'm gonna to jump to the shape management sub panel, hit new shape. And instead of drawing a freehand shape, I'm actually gonna create a quick shape this time. So if I click down this menu, you can see we have quite a few options. Uh, for this face, I'm gonna go ahead and select a vignette and zoom out a little bit here. And I'm going to adjust this vignette using the blue shape bounding box. Already you can see that this is far easier. I'm just going to go in here and adjust these control points nice and easy. And you can see we've already got a mild better selection using the quick shape. Uh, so that can save a fair bit of time. Let's make this a bit smaller and we'll use function F12 to fit the image display within our window. Let's talk about feathering and let's talk about how we can use the overlay function to see what our shape is doing. In Baselight, the way that you see your shape mat is nice and simple. The keyboard shortcut key O toggles your overlay on and you can hit Shift O to toggle through the different modes of overlay that you can have on your image. If I go ahead and stretch the cursor view out just a little bit more and toggle through my overlay modes with Shift O, you can see that the rendering mode is changing to reflect the current mode. If I turn my overlay off with the keyboard shortcut O, you can see that the rendering goes back to row cursor. At any point, we can go down to the cursor view and change these manually here. So for now, I'm gonna to toggle my overlay back on and I'm gonna leave it on layer mat overlay, which is my personal preference. And you can see that we have a pretty large feather applied to this shape. Looking at the feathering sub panel in the parameters view, you can see we have a feather radius of 50 which is the default when you create a vignette quick shape. I probably want to reduce this quite heavily. So I'm going to drag the slider down to probably about sort of five. And I'm going to zoom in on my image display just so we can see what we're doing. You can see that we can change the opacity of the shape, which will affect the strength of the color grading adjustment. And you can see that we can keyframe these parameters and we can also using the shape motion keyframe adjust its position throughout the shot. Though again, we will be looking at keyframing this and tracking shapes in the next insight. You can see as I adjust this feather up and down that it really increases the size of the shape. The edges are diffused, but it really increases the size of the shape before you get the level of diffusion that I expect at least. So there's two things we could do here. We could either really make the feather nice and wide, then using the shape bounding box, holding down the command key, we can go ahead and just reduce the size of our shape. But see, even then, it, this feels a bit messy. It doesn't really work. What's the solution here to potentially get a slightly smaller shape with a slightly more diffused feather? If we go ahead and open up our sub panel, you can see that there's a edit mat tool button that we can push. If we go ahead and toggle this on, you can see that it's actually created a mat tool layer in our stack and has given us four additional options that we can use to affect the border of our mat. You can see we've got erode dilate options, in out blur, mat curve, and so on. We're gonna stick with the blur tab for now, and we're gonna increase the radius of our blur. As we increase a slider, you can see that the type of blur that we get is radically different to the feather radius found within the shape tool. When I'm creating shapes, I always add this mat tool, and I always use this blur to just sort of get a little bit of diffusion um, to make this shape nice and soft. I can jump back to my grading layer with the keyboard shortcut G, and I'm gonna remove the overlay using the keyboard shortcut O. So now I've made and refined my shape mat, I'm gonna go and increase my balance, and you can see that on her face, it will increase. If I bypass this grade using function command F11, you can see the balance grade adjustment is being constrained just to my shape. Hitting function F12, if I wanted to make an adjustment to the outside of this shape, I can go to my outside grade adjustments and I will lower the balance. 
and this base grade will affect everything on the outside of my circle shape. I can now go back to my inside and start making color adjustments and I can start to really separate my image using the inside and outside of my shape mat. Finally, let's tab along to the next shot here and let's look at creating multiple shapes within one shape layer and let's see what kind of looks we can achieve using those tools. So we've got a shot here, an actress sitting on the left and an actress lying down on the bed. If we go ahead and create a new grading layer and add a new shape layer with the keyboard shortcut S and under the shape management we'll go to our quick shape and add a vignette. We'll toggle our overlay on with our O key and just adjust this feather down increase the shape size a little and uh, instead of hitting the edit matte tool I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut B B for blur and we'll increase the radius to really diffuse this vignette out I'm going to jump to my grade layer with G turn my overlay off with O and on the outside of this shape I'm going to decrease the balance by clicking and dragging counterclockwise and I'm going to really exaggerate this vignette now this is looking very stylized, but we've sort of lost this actress a little bit. We sort of want to bring her back into the fold. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to jump up to my shape layer with the keyboard shortcut S. I'm going to toggle my overlay back on with O. I'm going to add another shape. And in this case, it's going to be an edge left gradient. And now you can see that in this one shape layer, we now have two shapes. We've got our circle and we've got our gradient. You can also see that the operation between those two shapes is currently union. So there's different operation modes that you can select here that will change how these shapes interface with each other. So I'm gonna leave this on union for now and we're gonna turn the overlay off with the O key. So as you can see, when we drag this gradient along, it negates the effect of our vignette. Let's explore why this happens. If we jump down to our layer two, enter our overlay mode and just toggle to the layer invert overlay. This middle gray is our vignette. It's the outside of our circle shape and we've heavily reduced the exposure on this middle gray area. As I go ahead and shift this gradient through the image, the circle and the gradient have now joined together. So everything that is to the left of this gradient is now the inside of the shape and everything to the right of the gradient is the outside of the shape. These adjustments are only affecting the outside. So what that means in practical terms we are reducing the vignette on the left hand side of the image. If I wanted to, I could go to the inside of this image here and make further adjustments, further increasing the contrast, maybe boosting up the midtones. And you can see we've got a really strong direction now towards the left hand side of the image and really rebalancing that light. I can hit function command F11 to show the before and the after. Lastly, uh, let's have a look at subtracting two different shapes within one layer. What I'm going to do, add a simple balance layer to get the exposure up. There's the flare control here, which I'm going to bring down just a touch. We're going to add a shape using the S key. And we're going to add another shape. In this case, we're going to do a edge right gradient. And we're going to drag this gradient along. Sometimes this takes a couple of times to select it. It's really annoying. I'm going to drag this out to the left and hit O to see what my mat is doing. I'm going to hit Shift O to toggle to my layer mat overlay. And I'm going to hit Command, middle mouse button, drag to the left to just view my image display with a little bit of space. And let's go ahead and darken the inside of our gradient using the balance tool. So I'm going to really darken that down on the outside of my gradient, so this portion here. I'm going to brighten the image with the balance tool. So again, creating a really strong contrast here. This is darkening the right-hand side of the image, um, but obviously our subject is looking um, relatively underexposed. So what we can do is we'll go ahead and select our shape layer and we'll add a new shape. And this time I'm just gonna draw a freehand shape. So I'm literally just gonna draw on the image here, something nice and rough. Go ahead and drag that out. So as you can see, with the union operation applied, this shape is fully being affected by the inside of our shape. What we want to do is in our shape layer, we want to change the operation from union to subtract. This literally subtracts this shape from the shape below. Now, obviously this shape doesn't have any feathering. So let's go ahead and we'll add a bit of feather here and we'll jump into our matte tool and we'll go ahead and blur this out. 
a fair bit. Cool. Jumping up to our shape, we can also sort of dim the opacity a little bit. So that's probably looking a bit too bright. It's looking a little bit out of place. But if we go to our shape and blow the opacity down, that's all the way down. So we would want to bring back a little bit there. That's probably looking good at 55%. This isn't the most practical example and probably not how I would grade this shot normally. But as you can probably imagine, there's lots of ways to use the subtract mode to create negative mats or occlusion mats on a wide range of different subjects um, that would be a lot more appropriate. Okay, and that is an introductory look at creating shapes within Baselight. Stay tuned for the next insight where we'll have a look at tracking shapes. For MixingLight.com, I'm Luke Ross.